Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. So today, as you can tell from the title, I'm going to be reacting to keep this strategy of shaitan in your mind and I'm very excited to see what this holds. If you're new to this channel, like I said, make sure to like, subscribe and subscribe and of course to don't forget to um share other than that we also have a vlogging channel called funny and jesse 2.0 we post every weekend or at least when we remember to and a big shout out to everyone that's been watching liking commenting everything just everything we appreciate so without wasting time let's get into the video to note that this is uh, the ultimate battle and the ultimate conflict that humanity will engage in since its birth all the way to the last day our ultimate enemy is shaitan and there's no greater enemy that we have and every other enemy that we have is only an agent of the shaitan is only furthered or fueled by a shaitan and in these few ayat this this relentless permanent enemy of ours laid out his entire strategy what is he going to do with us how is he going to do it? You know, how is he going to come at us? Every single one of us. Until the end of time. And that's a pretty big deal. Now we know the game plan of the enemy. And Allah recorded it in the Qur'an. So it's not a small thing to just pass by. It's important to understand how is it that the devil is going to come at us in our lives, at any moment of our lives, and try to pull us into his way. Right? So which, which was my motivation for covering this in some depth. We've come to the last phrase of this ayah. The promise was that he will attack. He said, "Thumma la ati I swear to it. I will absolutely come at them. I'll attack them from right in front of them, from behind them, from their right and from their left. And I've given khutbas on each of those now. And this is the final comment that he makes. And that comment is, "Wala tajidu akthrahum shakirin." You will find. You will not find most of them grateful. You will not find most of them grateful. Now, this is an important phrase and we have to see the guidance Allah Azza wa has embedded and infused inside of this phrase and that's what this khutbah is dedicated to. Where I want to start first and foremost is the origin of the word. I translated shakirin as grateful. It comes from the word shukr which can easily be translated as gratitude. But originally in the Arabic language as shukur or as shakur min ad dawaib and some, some animals were called shakur. What kind of animal was called shakur? The kind of animal that eats a little bit and gets fat really quickly. Like it has a little bit of grass and it fills up. Similarly, shakra was used uh, for you know, the udder of a cow that immediately fills up with milk. So it gives more milk than expected. And the, the idea behind the origin of the word shukr is actually something small with a little bit of good and that good swells and enhances to the point where it starts coming out. It pours out. And from it, the Arabs developed a notion of gratitude, meaning shukr, in their other words for uh, you know, gratitude in Arabic, but this particular word highlights when you're grateful over something that may seemingly be small, but its effects are many. So you don't dismiss something that's done for you, and you're actually appreciative of what's done for you, or the good that you have, in not just one way, in many ways. And it multiplies inside you. Not only does it multiply inside you, you would think gratitude is a feeling. But it's more than a feeling because according to you know, Hassan Hassan Jabal in his, in his um, commentary on the origin of the word, he says, وَشُكْرُ يَزِيدُ عَنِ الْرِضَى Not just being happy with what you have. Not just being content with what we have. It's more than that. Now what's more than that? في معنى الظهور Meaning, just like the milk pours out or just like the, the, the sheep shows that it's grown more, the same way when, you're, when you have shukr in you, not only do you appreciate something, it actually results in you doing something. It comes out. Your mood has changed. Your behavior has changed. You've even verbalized how grateful you are. You've actually said thank you. A lot of times you have family members and your, your, your uh, father says to you, you know, you never thank me for anything. You don't appreciate anything you do. I do. And you say, yeah, I do. I appreciate what you do. Yeah, but you never said it. I have shukr. No, shukr doesn't mean you have it in your head. It has to come out, it has to be said and stated and displayed. One of the names of Allah is actually Shakir. One of the names of Allah, why? He appreciates what little his slaves do and he does so much for them. So shukr is not just a feeling, it's actually behavior also that comes from that feeling. 
It's not just a, a sentiment and an emotion that leaves, stays buried inside, it manifests itself. So that's the first thing I wanted to get out of the way in this khutbah, is just some of the origins of the meaning of the word gratitude and appreciation, and how it's supposed to be something that overwhelms a person. It's a very powerful thought that grows and grows and grows and swells inside of you. Now, the devil's promise is, you will, find most of, you will not find most of them with gratitude. They're not going to have shukr, human beings. You know, what I want you, the first thing I want you to think about in, in terms of this conversation is Allah told Shaitan, فَمَا يَكُونُ لَكَ أَن تَتَكَبَّرَ فِيهَا When the devil refused to do sajda, when Shaitan refused to do sajda, Allah told him, you have no right, you, it's not right for you to be arrogant here. The problem of the devil was arrogance. And that's the reason he got kicked out. فَخْرُجْ you know, إِنَّكَ مِنَ الصَّاغِرِينَ Get out of here. He was expelled because he was arrogant. Now, because he's angry at humanity, you expect that he would turn back to Allah and say, well, you kicked me out of here because I'm arrogant. I'm going to prove to you that they're arrogant. So they don't deserve this place either. But instead of telling Allah, oh, you think I'm arrogant? Let me show you how arrogant they are. He said, you think I'm arrogant? Once I'm done attacking them, I will prove to you, not that they're arrogant, but they're not grateful. So it's a switch. The switch is, the, if the complaint against the devil is that he's arrogant, then he should prove that I'm not that different from these guys. Look, they're arrogant too. But no, he says, I will prove that they are ungrateful. What, what Qur'an has done so strategically and so wisely here, is that's actually shown us something. The opposite of arrogance we think the opposite of arrogance is humility in the dictionary. The opposite of arrogance is what? Humility. But in the Qur'an, the opposite of arrogance is gratitude. So Allah has taught us a new opposite, you see. And so what we're learning now is, there's, it is impossible for a human being to be arrogant if they are grateful. And if they are grateful, there's no way arrogance will hurt them. And the fact that arrogance occurs, that can only be a manifestation of a lack of shukr. If shukr was there, there's no way that would have happened. So that's the first important thing. If when someone says, hey, at least I'm not arrogant, well, from the Qur'an's definition, don't just think about arrogance as someone who thinks very highly of themselves, or is full of themselves, or is mean towards others. You, you and I have to check ourselves how grateful are we. Because if gratitude is missing, then arrogance is there. Because th these are opposites in the Qur'an now. These, are, these, are put, these have been placed against one another. The next thing that's important here, I kept telling you shaitan comes from four directions. And now we're learning, if his attack is successful, what's the goal? The goal is not for human beings to make a mistake. That's not his goal, that's not enough. Because Allah created the human beings programmed to make mistakes. كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمْ خَطَّعُونَ All children of Adam keep on making mistakes. That's what we do. Human beings are not made perfect. We're not angels, we have choice. We have, we have shortcomings. As a matter of fact, I kept telling you, even when we do good deeds, they have shortcomings. Even when we make salah, it's not perfect. Even when we recite Qur'an, it's not perfect. Even when we do hajj, it's not perfect. When we fast, it's not perfect. So we're imperfect by definition. So the fact that we have mistakes is no surprise. The devil's mission is not to get us to make a mistake. The devil's mission is clear in this ayah. Once I attack them from these directions, I will prove to you that they are not grateful. If he can get gratitude out of us as a result of our mistakes, then he's successful. That's actually his goal, to remove the sense of appreciation of Allah and to do things out of the appreciation and the shukr to Allah, our optimistic you know, feeling towards Allah. You know, if, if you, you think about our relationship with Allah, for so many people their relationship with Allah is based on fear. If you don't pray, Allah is going to burn you. If you don't do this, Allah is going to punish you. Your, your, your first impulse of your relationship with the one who made you is that you should be afraid of Him. And though fear is a part of my relationship with Him, the, the most powerful force inside me that should make me do something for Allah, like pray, like eat halal, like do the right thing, like stay away from evil deeds, is actually gratitude. Allah has done so much for me, the least I can do is these few things. If He can get rid of that feeling, shukr, if he can get rid of shukr, then even if I'm obeying Allah, my heart is missing something. It's not going to have what it really, really needs to be able to, to carry on. It is out of a sense of gratitude that we are in obedience to Allah. Which is why Fatiha, that calls us to Allah's worship, iyaka na'budu, begins with gratitude. Alhamdulillah is where it begins. And then we get to worship. 
Because that sense of appreciation of Allah is what drives us more than anything else. But really what I wanted to spend the majority of this khutbah on is these attacks again and how each of them we can be protected from those attacks if we are grateful. Now let me phrase that another way. He said to Allah, I will attack them from four sides and I'll prove to you that they're not grateful. In other words, if they were grateful, these attacks wouldn't have worked. If they're actually grateful, then the attacks will fail. If they have shukr, they are not gonna, they're not going to succeed. So though I've given you long explanations of each of those directions, I'm going to walk you through each of them again briefly and describe to you in brief, in simple terms, how if we can remember to be grateful to Allah, we can actually protect ourselves from the, from the waswasa of shaitan. When, when he comes from the front, he attacks me, you and me from the front, he tempts us from what we can have. You see something in front of you, you're tempted by it, the greed. And what, what, what comes from the front is also your future. You start thinking about your future or worried about your future. Is this going to happen or is that going to happen? And sometimes you start making bad decisions, decisions that Allah won't be happy with because you're concerned about your future. If you and I have shukr inside us, deep gratitude of Allah inside us, then we know that if you look back in your past, how many times has Allah provided for you? How many times have you been and I've been in a problem and Allah has taken care of us all this time? Why do you think that all of a sudden, now Allah will not take care of you. In other words, whatever temptation comes to you from the front, if you and I can learn to be grateful for what we have, and not go towards something more than what we need, not let our greed get in the way, not let our reliance of Allah go away, but be grateful, He's taken care of me this far, why would He leave me now? This is the same thing Allah said to His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى Allah didn't abandon you. Just because you're going through a hard time and you see something in front of you that you might just grab onto and take it because you're desperate, no. You know, you were in desperate need, he provided you before, he reminds him. Your past should remind you how grateful we should be even in times of crisis, which is why, this is the, this is the key here, if you're tempted by something that comes in front of you, then actually, be grateful to Allah by talking about the favor Allah has done for you. This is what Yusuf did. Yusuf was tempted by that minister's wife. She, she tried to seduce him. What was his immediate response? My master has been really good to me. He is, you know, first he sought Allah's protection and immediately he said, Allah has been good to me, meaning he was shakir, he was grateful, immediately. And that protected him. If you can, you, know, you can acknowledge the favor of Allah on you, then the attacks that come from the front, you'll be able to stay away from them. The attacks from behind are scarier though. The attacks from behind are some, like, like I described to you before, sometimes people were living in a life of sin. They were doing things they weren't supposed to do. And Allah pulled them out. Maybe it happened last Ramadan, maybe it happened last Jum'ah, maybe it happened two hours ago, I don't know. But Allah pulled you out of sin. And you feel the, the burden lift from inside you. That's a feeling only you know, nobody else, you can't even describe it to anybody else. You can feel the tears rolling down your eyes because Allah has pulled you into light again. And He's pulled, removed darkness from you. And the evil that you felt that was weighing on you has been taken away from you. Now you're in a sense of relief that Allah has actually given you this gift that He's able to get you away from a life of evil, from a sin. Now that you have that for a while, the devil comes back and says, Hey, want to go back? He tries to pull you back again. And when he's about to pull you back, at that moment you and I have to remember the moment we felt gratitude that Allah pulled us out. How grateful were we when Allah pulled us out the first time? A person has to forget that. They have to forget the moment they made tawbah. They have to forget when they felt that closeness to Allah or the relief that Allah gave them. They have to let go of that for the devil to be successful in pulling them back again, in tempting them again. But it is in those moments when he tries to pull you and attack you from behind that you and I have to remind ourselves of how Allah has given us the gift of guidance, how Allah has given us the gift of tawbah, the gift of repentance, so that whenever that same temptation, that same attack, because the devil knows, it worked last time, let me try it again, it'll probably work again on this guy. I tried the last 10 times it worked, the 11th time it should work too. But if you've made tawbah and you've tasted its sweetness, that's what you should be grateful for. I love videos like this. I mean, they remind you to 
they remind you of certain important things in life gratitude for once how many of you people can actually say yes i do say thank you to my parents for the things they've done for us so far or today we take advantage we never say thank you to our parents because maybe they're always around us and we assume that they know we're thankful by not just saying it or maybe just enjoying what they've given us which doesn't make sense to me it doesn't matter whether it's your friend whether it's your sister whether it's your parents doing something for you not only should you be thankful or grateful but be make sure they know make sure the other person that's done something for you knows sometimes people don't even have to do anything for you just be grateful that part of your life also god god has like he said at the end of this video put us out of many many situations dark situations dark times how many of us actually do or are grateful for those times he's put us out but this one time things are going wrong you want to throw everything away but as i always say because god is a good god even if you throw him away for now and still come back to your senses and say say whatever you have to say and actually acknowledge that you're grateful with him in your life things always turn around there's always there's always a time for change things always turn around it's never too late for anything love this video loved everything about this message let me know what you guys actually think about this video and yeah make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video